Hello, this is another exercise based video and this time we're looking at nodes again and this is all based on what we've learned from node school and these exercises are there to help us improve, help you practice all the things that you've learnt. This is all part of a much bigger course on gabbit.co.uk where you can go right through from beginner to advanced levels and all the tutorials are free. There's also a discord server where you can show off your artwork, ask some questions or just have general blender chat. All the links are in the description. As per usual, I'll show you the material and then you're going to have a go at creating it for yourself. There's a couple of warm-up type ones and then they get harder as they go through. For this I've got an HDRI in the background, my background is also transparent and I've just got a subdivided cube on a plane. I've also got the Node Wrangler installed and I'm rendering on my GPU. So let's get into it. Here's the first one. Now your tip for this is to try and remember the keyboard shortcuts. Control T should help you. Okay so how did I make this? So here's my node setup. If you had anything like this, then you're doing well. And I will recreate this material now. So I'll create a new. Interestingly, if I create a new down here, it starts from the beginning. But let's get that material back on. If I create a new from here, it keeps the same texture, even though this is completely new. So if you want to sort of copy the texture, but create a duplicate of it, then the plus sign up here is what you need. Anyway, let's create a new one still. So we're starting afresh. So I'll click on my diffuse and shift S if you've got the node Wrangler installed will give you switch, switch shader and we'll change it to the principled BSDF. I always use that because it's the most realistic results. Then to get all the stuff that plugs into it, we press control T and that gives us the texture coordinates, mapping and image texture. Now because it's got no image texture loaded, it's purple and we need to switch this to a noise texture. So shift S texture, noise. Nothing's coming up and that's because I've got my texture coordinate to UV. I'm going to change it to object. You can use generated but I prefer object. It generally does a slightly better job in my opinion. So we're almost there. We need to change it to black and white so we use the factor. And I do believe that's pretty much what I had except I brought down the roughness. So it's a tiny bit shiny. My scale may have been slightly different as well. If you just had this, which is these three, that's fine. It probably just means that you need to bring the scale up a bit more because this automatically goes from generated, which is a slightly different way of calculating the mapping. I prefer to add all these in myself though, just then I know where I stand. Okay, so that was hopefully fairly straightforward if you looked at the Node School tutorials. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so this one looks a tiny bit more complicated and a tiny bit more bumpy, which is obviously your hint. Have a go at that. Okay, so how did I go about making this? If you had anything that looks like this, you're doing well. But I will start afresh to show you how I made it. So let's start anew. Same again. Shift S, Shader, Principled Shader, and Control T. Change this to Object, and change this to a Noise. So it's still a Noise, and we could have duplicated our old shader. Move these over slightly. And in here, I created a Bump. So Shift A, Vector, Bump. From the factor, of course, the black and white, into the height, and from the normal to the normal. And there we're starting to get our bump. Move these across a touch. And in here, I created a color ramp. So Shift A, Converter, Color Ramp. It's still not quite there. I think I put the scale up slightly to something like 8. Yeah, that's more like it. And I changed the black to a blue. Now, it doesn't look like much has happened, but it has actually changed the black areas to blue. But if I move this up slightly, those areas become more pronounced and therefore more blue. I think my one might have been a tiny bit more bumpy as well, somewhere like that, with a bit more blue. Okay, so hopefully you're getting used to the idea of a colour ramp. I generally don't use this for colour. I use it just for black and white information. I just, in this instant, wanted you to see the results rather than just a black and white image in here. Also something that I did in my other one that I haven't done here is I actually came from the factor which is a very slightly different result because it's purely black and white information and this is trying to interpret the colour information into tone or black and white. Okay so let's go for the third one. There it is and your hint this time is roughness. So have a go at that. Okay so how do we go about making that one? If you had anything that looks like this you've done well. So still using the noise texture but this time using a colour ramp into the roughness. I'll recreate it still, so you can see how I did it, but I'll speed through this bit. Okay, 
Okay, so I've got to this point and I'm still going into the color. So what I did was I went from the color into the roughness. And remember to change this to the factor. I'll cut off that node as well with control left click. So at the moment it's very difficult to see the results of this. But if I get them closer together, the fall off or the distance between the two becomes more apparent as you can start to see there. And closer still and you can really start to see it. The last thing I changed and I actually just forgot about, I think I changed it to metallic and that really makes the reflections pop. But can you see this bit in between is very small? That's because my bit in between the colours is very small. So the further the distance apart, the wider this area becomes. And I had mine very close together to really show and highlight the results. This is something that's used an awful lot with a colour ramp node. So try and get used to this process of changing the roughness with a colour ramp and any sort of procedural texture for the moment. Okay then, let's have a look at the last one. So I would say this is certainly a big jump, this one. But it's the same principles. Your hint for this one is a mix shader. And it's not completely obvious, so one of my mix shaders is an emission. The other hint is factor. Hopefully that helps you. Have a go at that. Okay, so looking a bit more complicated here. If you've got anything that looks like that, or don't worry too much about this power node for now. If this goes straight into your factor, then you're doing well. Okay, so I'm going to recreate that. This time I'll actually create a duplicate of this so we can see the results to the side like that. Okay, so new texture and I'll rush through the first bit again. So this time I used a Veronoi. I looked that up. It's not Veronois. I thought it was French, but it's actually Russian. And Veronoi was his name, the mathematician that came up with this. So sorry for my mispronunciation in previous episodes. So I'm going to switch this, Shift S, Texture, Veronoi, or Veronoi. And at the moment it's just going straight into the principal shader. Now remember I made an emission for this, so I'll just create an emission down here. Shift A, Shader, Emission. And to link these two together with a mix shader, quickly is Alt, right click and drag over the two of them. It creates a mix shader and joins them up. So there's my emission, and I can press Control, Shift, to see that in the Node Wrangler, it automatically puts that to the surface output. There's my principal shader and my Veronoi. And here's the finished result at the moment. The emission was red, so I'll change that to red now. Reddish, anyway. And I think I put the strength up a bit. And my base color was actually blue. So I'll take this off for now and change that to blue. Okay, so it looks nothing like it at the moment. And remember, my mix shader is 100% is the bottom one. So that would be fully white. And fully black or 0% of light is the blue, the top one. Okay, it doesn't matter where I put this now. I can put this up and down, it won't make any difference. Because I'm coming from the Veronoi factor or color, but mainly the factor because it's black and white. And I'm going into the factor of the mix shader. And there we can see it having a result. So let's look at our Veronoi again. Control Shift to see that. So the white bits. They will be the bottom one, so the emissions, and the black bits will be the top one, which is this blue shader. Let's control shift click on the shader again, and we can see the results. I think my scale may have been up just a touch, and perhaps my emission wasn't quite so bright. There we go, we're getting much closer. The other thing to look out for is the shininess of my blue. You can see there, my blue is quite shiny. It's not in this one, so I must have brought the roughness right up. So it's all rough and they're almost the same. The only one thing I did slightly differently was, can you see that tiny little black dot there? That's a strange anomaly. And Blender in all its mathematical computations somehow has worked this out, I think, so the white has gone over one somehow. So if the white's 105%, there's no such thing and therefore it's just gone completely black. And the way I got around that with this one was to clamp it so it only went to a value of one. That's why there's no black spots on this one and there's a few on this one. If I change the scale down a bit, you'll probably see no black dots on there. Change the scale down at this one and there's these strange anomalies. And that's because I clamped it to one. So nothing coming from here will go over one. But for some reason on this one, when you go straight into the factor, it does go over one. It's not something that I want to dwell on too much, that's probably for a later date. But if you are interested, this is just a maths node changed to power. There's probably a few that would work, but power was the first one that I thought of and clamping it to one. So a bit of instruction there about clamping. 
Okay, so I hope that helped you all. Do comment and let me know how you're getting on. Am I going too fast, too slow? And are there any other tutorials that you'd like to see? I consider all requests. I don't always follow them up and I might follow them up much later. So thanks for all your support and thanks for watching.